Yo. Welcome to another Synfig tutorial and today we will be taking a look at Synfig version 1.5. Now this version has not yet been released. However, we do have access to the development version and I will be putting a link to that in the description below as well as a link to the release notes so that you can read about all the new changes that um, they are making in the upcoming version. So if you look through, you can see that there, there has been quite a number of changes. But in this video, I won't be going over every single detail. I'll only be going over the changes that I am most excited about. Okay, so let's get right into that, shall we? All right, so once you open up version 1.5, the first thing that you'll notice, or at least the first thing that I noticed, is that these tools, or these icons that used to be here, they are now at, on the sidebar right here. And they actually fe feel quite comfy right here. Um, so it's almost as if they were made to be here, right? And not here. <laughs> not that I had a problem or an issue with them being here, but I really, really like the idea that they will now be um, living in this space here. So that is pretty cool. Uh, the next thing that you'll notice is that we now have a new tool and that is a skeleton tool. So you no longer have to go to layer, new layer, other and click on skeleton to create a skeleton. Of course, you can still do that, but it's easier to just select the tool here. And if you notice in the options here, you have the ability to change the name of the skeleton. Uh, you can also increase the bone width, as well as you have the ability to choose to, to create a skeleton layer or a skeleton deform layer. So that is pretty interesting there. And to create a bone, just simply left click and you will automatically get your bone there. Or left click, hold down your mouse button and drag to create a bone with um, a longer length. All right, so that is pretty cool. Uh, now, there have been quite a number of changes to the skeleton tool. Um, one notable change is that Oh, by the way, this is the relationship line. So it shows you which bone is connected to, to which. Um, so that's an interesting change right here. I actually like this. Um, so let me just go over some of the changes here. So to add a child bone, uh, we usually, we used to have to right click and then click on create child bone. But now all you need to do is uh, click on the bone that you want to have a child and then just left click and it will automatically create a bone and connect it to the one that you had highlighted before. So we can see that this is the parent of this that we just created. So that is pretty cool. And that pretty much works with any bone. Okay, so um, let's say I wanted to create a child bone for this one or this one. I would just select this bone and you can tell that the bone is selected when you see the yellow outline over the bones. So let me just left click here and it automatically creates a bone and links it to the bone that I had selected. So that will save you a bunch of time when you're creating your bones. Also, um, something pretty interesting is that let's say you accidentally made this bone the child of this bone, but you actually wanted this to be the parent bone of this bone. Well, it's pretty easy. All you need to do is select the bone. So I'm gonna select the bone that I want to be the child, and then just come over to the bone that I want to be the parent, and right click on the bone, and click set as parent to active bone. So whatever bone is active, um, the bone, this bone will be the parent of that bone. So if I click on this, it automatically switches its relationship to this bone. So it's very, very easy to reparent um, bones or, or relink re bones, um, as we can see here. So that is pretty cool. Also be careful because when you click, you'll just create bones all over the place. So if you don't want to create a bone, uh, just click on another tool and then you can still move your bones 
as necessary. All right, so that's enough of that. Uh, the next notable change is in our timeline here. So if you notice, we have we now have some tools here and one is to move, one is to duplicate the waypoints and one is to scale the waypoints. So let's click on animate and I'm just gonna add an object to the scene. And the reason why this is transparent is because for some reason, the blend method has been set to straight by default. But just change this to composite if this happens to you. And uh, let me just go ahead and add some animation real quick, like so. so I'm just gonna add a couple keyframes, like so. Now, the biggest change, I would say, is we now have the ability to se select keyframes. So if we, we left click and drag over the keyframes, we're able to select them. So that is pretty cool. We can, um, in the previous versions, we Yo. weren't able to do this and we'd have to select one keyframe or one waypoint at a time. So this will be a big time saver. Uh, one thing to note though is that once you select them, make sure that you select, you click on the move tool or the tool of whichever action that you want to, to perform. Um, so right now I want to move, so I'm gonna make sure that the move tool here is selected and I'm just gonna left click and drag and we see that our keyframes are now moving very easily. And we also have one to duplicate, so it's very easy to duplicate now. So uh, just click on the duplicate tool and then left click on the keyframe that you want to duplicate. So let's say I, let's say for example, I wanted to duplicate this one here, just left click and drag and it automatically duplicates it. Uh, left click and drag, left click and drag. So that is pretty cool. And also notice that we see a line here between the, these two keyframes. Now this happens whenever you have two keyframes that are the same, when no, there are no changes in the action. So this is a visual indicator to tell you that, uh, hey, this keyframe is the same as this one, right? Wherever the, the object is here, it is at the same position here. So that is really, really wonderful there. All right. And of course you can click on this to scale and it's not scaling in the same way that you think scaling is. It's simply scaling the keyframes. Uh, so in and out like so, All right? So we can play around play around with that. So that is pretty cool right there. Okay, so enough of that. The next notable change is we now have the ability to change fonts directly in Synfig um, using a drop down, drop down list. Now I think this was already available in Linux, I think, I'm not sure, but now it's available for Windows. So let's go ahead and take a look. So let me select my text tool here and let me just type something right here. Click OK. And let me move this over. Let me also scale this up so that we can see better, see it a bit better. And if we go into its properties and look for font family and click here and click on the list here, we now see we have a ton of, ton of fonts available. Well, these are the fonts that are on my machine. So whatever fonts are on your um, computer, the, those are the fonts that will show up here. So it's very, very easy to just change the font. So I'm really, really happy about this change. And I think I'm gonna have tons of fun with this. So yeah, very, 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 very pleased with this. Um, now the next notable change is the ability to uh, choose whichever sound you want to show up in the the sound timeline here. So if I should add um, a couple sounds here, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and add two sounds. So two sounds, so I'm gonna add this one and I'm gonna add, let me go and find another one, which is maybe this one here and load. So yeah. So we now have the ability to switch between whichever sound we want to 
to, to view here. So if we click here where it says no audio, we see both of the sounds here and we can just select the one that we want, right? So that is really, really cool. Really, really cool. Okay, so yeah. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all of the changes that I'm interested in. And again, of course, there are tons of other changes, right? Um, I might be doing a video about those changes once Synfig 1.5 is officially released. Maybe, I don't know. Um, it depends. <laughs> but um, hey, yeah, you can go ahead and download this and just experiment. Oh, I do recommend not to do any um, full projects using the development version because it's still unstable and you don't want to create an entire project and then you find that it either crashes or you aren't able to uh, maybe save properly or open the file. Okay, so I recommend using Synfig, Synfig 1.4 to do your um, full personal projects for the time being until the stable version of 1.5 has been released, okay? Uh, so that's it for this tutorial. Uh, well, it's not really a tutorial, right? <laughs> um, but anyway, I will see you in the next one. Yo, Kimari. Yo, Kimari.